obviously the stuff that's going on with Kanye at the moment, right? He's going for a bit of a tailspin and he's clearly just, you know, letting the flipping clip absolutely ring, not caring and absolutely burying anybody that kind of gets in his way. Post the whole White Lives Matter t-shirt that he debuted at Easy Season 9. And it seems to be an interesting flow of kind of insults that are kind of coming out of him because I think at the beginning of the day, I think I stressed the point on my social media platforms that it was quite interesting that despite him going at everybody, you know, he was attacking Hayley Bieber, he was attacking Justin, no, Justin Bieber indirectly attacking, what's her name, Gigi Hadid. We still hadn't heard him really address or clarify or refute the claims that Tremaine Emery made, or sorry, Emery made, which I think essentially set him off to be this angry today or whenever this was recorded, right? Um, and these comments, I feel like, have somehow really rung true and really stung him in a place where we don't really see Kanye be stung in a while. And I think that's certainly going to obviously set him on a completely different path in terms of him kind of firing shots at everybody. Because I don't think as bad as the, or as kind of critical as um, Gabriella's comments were in terms of her not really feeling the White Lives Matter t-shirt and, you know, the juxtaposition with that and the children's flipping Sunday service choir and the terrible clothes in general and maybe the show being a little bit underwhelming. I don't think that's really what set him off. I think what really set him off was whatever Tremaine put out here in his post especially considering it was him responding to Kanye's post where he was essentially trying to play the victim or trying to basically um, put out there that he's fighting a fight on a much higher and grandiose scale. And obviously with him mentioning the late great Virgil Abloh that set off Tremaine Emery who had to come out and say, nah, enough's enough. You can't be going out here kind of besmirching my friend's name and putting smut on his flipping name and his legacy when behind the scenes you're like this, you're like that, you're like this. But in general, in general, what was really kind of telling about this was that he never addressed any of these points and still to this day of the time of recording he hasn't really addressed any of the points that um, Tremaine brought up which I'll just go over one more time he said the following your best friend Virgil Negro please this time last year you said Virgil's designs are a disgrace to the black community in front of all your employees at Easy Arks loose set Holland I got all the receipts don't let me get into the things you said about V after his death yay tell the people why you didn't get invited to Virgil's actual funeral and, and the one before the public one at the museum and why you weren't allowed to speak at his public funeral you knew Virgil had terminal cancer and you rode on him in a group chat at Easy in interviews in songs etc you are broken or you are so broken or you are so broken keep Virgil's name out of your mouth keep Gabriella's name out of your mouth keep um, you're not a victim you're just an insecure narcissist that's dying for validation from the fashion world take care at least you'll, you'll always have Uganda so clearly these were coming from somebody that a lot of people would say is legitimate because he's been close to Kanye he's worked for Kanye he's collaborated with him he's worked for a long time with his best friend at the time in Virgil so all the stuff you would assume is coming from a somewhat real and true place so this is what kind of set off i think the whole chain um of events but then i guess kanye did finally uh, reply to tremaine in terms of maybe setting the record straight in some respect and it was quite possibly one of the rudest replies back i've seen to anybody that you would deem to be your friend at one point in time that it would kind of beggars belief to be honest and if i'm being honest as kind of funny as it is to watch this stuff from afar and to watch all this stuff burn and crumble because you know a lot of these guys I feel like have been, you know, for the most part living a lie anyway. This exists in all scenes, in all kind of, you know, um, subcultures where the people with the most clout or the people that are the most famous or most connected, they basically get away with murder and they have friends around them who enable them because they want to carry favour with them. They want to get on guest list. They want to get on seating list. They want to be next to them in pictures. They want to fly on a plane. They want to go here, go there, wherever it may be. So a lot of that stuff happens all the time and people kind of shut their mouth and don't say things or speak up things go on or someone does something untoward or acts like a douche whatever it may be because they always want to be on that person's good side so part of me feels like these guys have all in their own way enabled Kanye's behavior but obviously in another way the guy's a grown man he can do and say whatever he pleases and there's only so much talking you can do to some of you before you just say hey you do what you do I'm doing what I'm doing I'm just gonna keep out your way but I feel like in general this is a maybe a lesson to the scene overall that if you're gonna be overly political you have to decide how far you really willing to go because Kanye is deciding if it's if we're gonna do the whole politics thing if we're gonna do the whole like you know 
um, you're black and you're meant to represent this thing and that thing he's willing to go the complete opposite way that those guys are willing to go if those guys are willing to talk about you know inclusion and diversity and all that sort of good stuff he's willing to really kind of burn the boats and go full white lives matter and just say nah black people are the problem save you to trace and all that sort of mad shit so clearly there has to be some level of the deci- there has to be like a decision made if you're a creative out there whether or not you're going to allow politics to really influence your work whether or not you're going to let that affect people you people you collaborate with whether they have to align with you politically and societally in general for you to kind of collaborate them and to make that way make that make sense whether or not the politics thing in general kind of frames your overall mindset and your personality and your view in the world whatever it may be you have to decide on that and i think this has been one of those kind of moments it's sort of like a weird i think even Tremaine said it's a it's a line drawn in the sand like either you're going to be on that side or you're going to be on this side but I just don't want to see all these wild ads in videos and in clips of a flipping Yeezy season 10 or out there when at a Dunder fucking two or three party if this is what you're on and you think this guy doesn't represent what you represent then it is what it is not because he's Kanye that you kind of have to make special rules and bed over backwards if it's smoke it's smoke if you don't agree with what he has to say and you feel like he's a danger to the community and he's hurting kids and his words of violence all this sort of nonsense that you have to kind of just cut the cord but you know these people and they like to talk a big game and then when it comes down to it when sees when paris fashion week comes around again and it's time for an album release and he's doing a show with fucking future or with drake somewhere everyone's going to be on his dick trying to get on the list so that's when things change but i thought this what he said about tremaine was incredibly out of order incredibly rude and weirdly enough ended up throwing loads of other people under the bus who had nothing to do with it else whatsoever so this is courtesy of his instagram that he's obviously now deleted because you know Kanye as well is like somebody he does this quite often too he talks a big game and loves to kind of go on like he's a bad boy but in general look at all these posts he had he had nearly 42 posts and I think all of them are gone apart from these three he deleted every single one of them so he spoke a big game he was on there kind of gave it the big one but then I guess he got the word behind the scenes and he kind of you know um, acquiesced and deleted all them or archived all those all those posts in general so you know Kanye you know is a little bit um Chat, talks out of his ass as well in that regard which is interesting too because you can't say that to him because you say he talks out of his ass and he will go and destroy you so what a weird time to be alive we are isn't it? he designs a t-shirt that's meant to be provocative people respond to the provocation and he gets a hissy fit fucking wild dude so this is the post that he put out about tremaine he says the following tremendous right in the box logo font pretty horrible font and where he's put especially for someone like kanye to put that together it's a little bit sloppy a little bit hard, crass and whatever it may be but essentially um the caption of it underneath the post reads as follows courtesy of this um kanye twitter account that reposts all the stuff that he does so obviously you can get a bit of pieces of the things that he said even if he doesn't end up deleting them he says as follows andrew tremaine i'm changing your name forever tremaine's new name is the blm officer supreme this is tremendous no relationship to sean mendes or even mendes for clarity because latinos believe in god this guy is such a prick and i refuse to believe i refuse to believe this is the first time they've had a, a taste of kanye being a cunt i be, i refuse because you know not to kind of because that's what I think I remember when I was coming up in the scene, there were many people that I had a lot of issues with in terms of their personality and them being cunts and other people around me not recognizing that they're cunts and me being, having this weird, like, kind of like, re- kind of like having this weird me- reality breakdown. Like, I, I, can't you see this guy's a prick? Like, why are you not calling it out? But because he's got a good party, because he's known, because he does this, I couldn't figure it out, which is why, you know, luckily, I didn't engage in it too much. I just took a step back and kind of did my own thing, which maybe hurt me in the long run. But, you know, sanity and mental clarity stuff is obviously for the best. But I do remember that being a thing. Like, can't you guys notice that this guy's a piece of shit? And I refuse to believe this Kanye stuff that he's doing now is the first instance of him calling people out. We've seen the video of him, you know, essentially talking to Chance the Rapper like he's some nomad on the street that he doesn't know and being really disrespectful to him on camera. I don't know what happened prior or what happened after, but that little clip tells me everything you need to know about Kanye and the way he talks to his friends. So I don't believe this is the first time they've had an instinct or an inkling or an encounter with Kanye where he's been really disrespectful because this is crazy, really. If someone this is your friend, because you, they always say you have to be careful of your friends when they get mad and what they say when they get mad. Because if your friends get mad and they say some shit, then usually it means they've been burying that thing deep down and now they've got an excuse to say it. So the fact that he's saying this says a lot. And to be honest, this is the sort of stuff no amount of sorries or a dinner at Lucian's is going to change. 
this is like we're done you know I mean you're dead to me if I see you it's fucking on site sort of stuff that's what it is sort of stuff he's saying here this is wild especially for someone like a Kanye as well who's going around with the fucking gum shield on in his mouth acting like he wants to fight and shit like it's just it's quite it's quite sad I'm not going to lie it continues companies don't hire creative directors they hire BLM officers which is absolutely insane to say right literally devaluing any kind of hard work that he's put in the hard yards because even if you're saying he got hired as a BLM officer or he got hired in terms of um what's your thing called affirmative action the guy has still put a lot of work in regardless like the work that he's done from the beginning i don't need to to, to to blow his trumpet you know Tremaine's done a lot of good stuff to, to just reduce him to being a blm officer it's fucking obscene but again it continues um for all the people that hate you and your weak ass pants and know you only got your job since you were black and you were used to work for me and you knew virgil i don't think that makes any sense personally for me because i do remember there being this iconic picture of kanye west virgil abloh right where they were walking around new york or something i think it was around the time when kanye met up with drake no with drake met up with virgil and they have the same outfit on there the same Ar arterix jacket on yeah there we go i got it here yeah kanye i'm sorry virgil with the arterix jacket on and the iraq hat and um the jeans from vlone i think and uh he's jordan fives and then kanye had the flipping dead in tears jacket on underneath uh, parker so clearly he doesn't think maybe he thinks the pants are weak and he likes the jacket i'm not too sure but clearly the pant the jacket was good enough for him to wear especially when he was going through his little chubby phase right and he was happy with it so the fact that he's now trying to rewrite history and make it seem like this man doesn't know how to design good clothes is again clearly just him being mean for the sake of it because he knows what that does to a creative right mentioning the work that they do i think he said something about you and an ambush her clothes clothes are weak and she felt that all this sort of stuff he knows what he's doing he doesn't have to kind of twist the knife and to kind of get under people's skin and affect their confidence because he knows as being a creative himself when people criticize your work that's the thing that you really react to because like himself you know he flips a lid over those fucking long sleeve t-shirts that everyone doesn't like so clearly he knows that people get when and the stuff that um that they work hard on kind of gets dismissed or kind of insulted by people and it continues it says um hey tremendous hey supreme tremaine doesn't even skate you got your girlfriend to record me without my knowledge so you could threaten me on behalf of your virgil killing bosses you don't have the money to make it out of this one alive fucking wild insulting somebody that works at supreme that doesn't skate is insane because james jebby doesn't skate and he founded the company so that's completely mute and there are many people who work in the actual head offices of supreme as designers as consultants who don't skate either and just work for the brand because it's one of the fucking biggest brands in the world this idea that you can't if you don't skate you don't work for supreme is insane but again he's just being mean and then he continues here your girlfriend um uh threatened me with no, that knowledge so you could uh threaten me that you're behind the uh, virgil killing bosses i guess what he's going at here is that um is what tremaine said in this post if i'm not mistaken right this part of it where he mentioned this person's name lucette holland lucetti i think lucetti or lucetti how do you pronounce that lucetti i guess lucetti and when i googled this person earlier i found out they were i'm not sure if they're still there maybe they're not because kind of probably fired them but they were a designer at yeezy um and this person clearly had reported back to to to, to you know to what you call it tremaine oh my god you would never hear what kanye said about the and i guess she must have recorded some of it also but that's the person that he's basically talking about um in the post which is again again throwing other people under the bus whatever it may be but then you can maybe say you know him mentioning the names and not wanting to post receipts maybe him already declaring war in the first but i don't really know but i still think it's horrible um uh, you don't have enough money to make out of this again you know this these are these are bars that you would expect somebody that knows you would be saying because these are all very personal he's clearly kind of intimating or hinting that maybe Tremaine doesn't have money the fact that his bosses are under him like all these things are just nasty as friends nasty 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 things and then this thing about your Virgil killing bosses is insane because he's still not letting go of this idea because he think for some reason Kanye thinks LVMH has bought Supreme which they haven't it's a other company called um what's it called vf something right um they also own flipping north face and a few other companies they're the ones that own a stake in flipping supreme not uh not flipping lvmh unless kanye is inadvertently in his own way telling us they do by burying his friend at the same time i'm not really too sure but he's got this boner in his thing about flipping you know but i don't know being the reason why kanye virgil passed away which again it's just 
the guy, man, let him rest in peace, man. Like, honestly, this is not, not a way to honor someone's legacy, especially someone like that who tried his best to bring people together and just kind of keep the peace. It continues. This is the worst mistake of your life. But hey, if somebody jumped in front of a train, what you expect? You broke my heart tremendous. I took you off the streets tremendous. Only because you was the struggle version of virtual. <laughs> honestly, that must be one of the that must be one of the most hilarious and like I said earlier, one of the most hilarious and mean spirit insults I've ever seen in my entire life. Like calling somebody the struggle version of Virgil is just beyond disrespectful and again that's what i'm saying this is the sort of stuff where because that's the thing with kanye he's got a little bit of a dj academics in him he talks a big game he rants and raves online but he's never really outside the way he thinks he's outside he goes to fashion shows and stuff but who's he gonna bump into in real life in terms of actually being about he's not there you know he's a billionaire he's surrounded by security whenever he goes i don't know all this it, it, it's just annoying see the picture of him coming out of the hotel with a gum shield on like he's in the middle of fucking you know johannesburg or something it's just silly you know what i mean whatever we continue um i'm your conscious tremendous hi uh, hi i'm tremendous conscious i think it's okay for my girlfriend to get receipts by saving text and recording yay without him knowing yeah tremendous that will be perfect um that will be perfect the culture would love to see you destroy one of its bravest heroes hey tremendous tell yay to keep virgil's name out of his mouth that's going to go over um, with flying colors hey tremendous you got enough money to go to go against yay hey tremendous um go be, go become the black lives matter officer at supreme even though you're not a real skater or a real designer hey tremendous listen to your conscience ignore the fact that your boss's security guards just slapped a child i don't know what that means I guess he means some, something happened with Bernard. I know the security guard. I don't know. Matter of fact, tremendous. You should be the new Malcolm X assassin. That's a great legacy. Tyler hates you. That's a, again, he's just throwing people under the bus. So now we have this knowledge that Tyler, the creator, and, and Tremaine don't get along. Do we need to know that? No. Horrible. Continues. Tall real skaters and or real creators with talent bootleg this tea and sell it as a protest to talentless NPC scumbags who get jobs over you because corporations want to control the oppressed black vote with struggle Virgils. Absolutely heinous stuff to come out of him, right? In terms of accusing people of different things. Like he just... And again, like I said, I just don't think this is the first time he's done this. I think he's done this before. People make excuses because it's Kanye and they don't want to lose favor with him and they want to be his friend and blah, 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 blah. I just think it's absolutely terrible personally for me. But the other thing that was really, really heartbreaking about the whole incident that I thought was really, really bad was... Bubbly, 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 bah. Where is it? If I can find it here. Was this. This is what, and this is the post taken from uh, Kanye's main, obviously, profile before he deleted everything, like the big P word that he is in this regard. And there was this post here where he said, Uzo, I don't know if it's Uzo or Uzo, I'm not sure if he means Uzo Mongo, that guy who's a stylist. I think is it is Uzo Mongo, Uzo Monji, I forgot his name. Um, I think he's a Nigerian dude who's an OG stylist from back in the day. I remember him from times of like Philip Plus London and shit. I'm not sure if he means him or if he means Uzi Ver, I'm not too sure. But anyway, or somebody else could Uzi, who knows. But he says, Uzo told me, tear Tremaine's fucking head off. So again, burying somebody else in the grave who doesn't need to get involved in this stuff. The influence is real. Liana Fabian will never sneak you so no pussy behind Lucette's back again. So this guy is basically letting us know that whoever Liana Fabian is and this Lucette woman who used to work for Yeezy, again, another of his employees who you'd imagine would be a close friend of his, he's basically letting it be known that flipping Tremaine allegedly was fucking this woman's girlfriend behind her back or whatever it may be. Like, who does stuff like this? Like, legitimately, who does stuff like this to their friends? You were once friends, and this again, this all started because this man dared to question him, dared to kind of call him out because he was attacking some woman who basically had a pretty nuanced and fair critique of his shirts. The shirts were meant to be divisive. They were meant to kind of cause conversation and get people to debate stuff. And she put out her comment. She didn't like it. She thought it was destructive. She thought it wasn't helpful. She's one of those people that, be that believes words are violent, blah, 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 blah. And she made her point known. That was it. It was really respectful. I thought it for the most part. It didn't really, wasn't mean spirit at all. It was less mean than anything Kathy Horner said about Kanye. You ever seen him do the same thing to her, right? 
If you want to talk about that, or, okay, this girl might be bigger, but Kathy Horn doesn't look like fucking Giselle Bunchen, does she? He could have went after her, but he doesn't. So again, this guy is like, he's just not a good dude, bruv. Like clearly not a good dude. And again, that's what I'm saying. Some of these guys, I think maybe deserve a little bit of this because they've been protecting and kind of not refusing to say these things in public about people because they want to kind of protect their connects and their industry links and shit. But then when it kind of blows up, they're the ones that pay the biggest price. That's why probably someone like a Heron Preston needs to get a big shout out because he he minds his, the business that pays him. He doesn't get involved in this at all. He's nowhere to be found at all. He hasn't liked a single post. He hasn't done anything. He's way, way over somewhere in New York enjoying himself, him and his girlfriend and creating good little flip 3D shoes and orange jackets and shit. He's not involved in this in the slightest. So it probably is best to kind of adopt a Heron Preston side of things and just mind your business. But it continues here. Um, but honestly, I didn't know you could smash joints you could smash rocky level joints i'm proud of you <laughs> he's such a cunt honestly if i'm tremaine like we have to get down we have to get down man you can't be talking about it, but it's in public we have to get down you're trying to re call me tremendous and I, I think i saw when i was on tremendous when i was, oh, geez, yeah, I you when I was on tremaine's post last I think maybe if I could refresh this, I scanned through the comments and mad flipping Kanye trolls were in the comments just spamming him saying tremendous, 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 a BLM officer of fucking Supreme and shit in the comments. That was all they were saying in there, going at him again and again, like crazy shit. So if this is what you're doing, you're sending all your sycophants, what do you call them? You're sending all your sycophant peanut gallery algorithm fans after me, then I have to go in. Yeah, you know I mean I have to go in as well. And when I see you, it's gonna be up. So this is what basically has happened. Um Murder Bravado is even getting in there as well and saying F flipping um what you call it, Kanye. Mad, isn't it? You'd think he'd be a good a big Kanye fan, but maybe actually he's more of a Virgil guy though, isn't it? Um, in terms of him bringing him in and and whatnot. But yeah, like this is an opportunity to throw hands, really it is. It has to be an opportunity to throw hands because this can't be like something that gets sorted out over a dinner somewhere in Swanky Hotel. This is something that, you know, it's crossed the line and it is what it is, but it kind of proves, like I said before, that Kanye's probably always been a bit of a piece of shit, to be fair. Um, but people kind of, you know, ignored it because at the time he was making great music, he was making great fashion, he was making great cultural events and people wanted to be a part of it and just be around that kind of aura and that star power, right? And have it rubble for themselves. And clearly for some people it has rubbed off for themselves because they've been able to launch their own careers off of the back of everything that he kind of uh, built and, you know, his influence in general. So it obviously made some sense, but now it's all kind of blown up in their faces and their whole cool guy house of cars are come tumbling down and everyone's kind of seen them for what they are. And maybe that's his overall point. Maybe he felt like, hey, you can't call me out because I know what you guys are like actually behind the scenes. But then I just think, you know, some things you should never speak about in public, especially if they're your friends. You just keep stum. The fact that he's airing people out, accusing people of cheating, all this sort of stuff is just that stuff you can't take back. You can't take that stuff back. That stuff that has to, you have to kind of stand on it forever. 